But this is not gonna be a habit, so don't expect it. Work, oh, there goes the note. That's the Dune books. Mom is gonna fall over, no! I might give this a peek. Oh. So I don't normally do book hauls. I don't like doing them. I've said before I don't like doing them, but I'm doing a book haul. <laughs> but this is not gonna be a habit, so don't expect it. But anyway, I'm doing a book haul because so many lovely people gave me so many lovely books that I was just looking at the stack of books that was sent to me by so many people that I was like, I feel like I should do a haul to express my gratitude properly. Um, so basically almost this entire haul is books that my patrons sent me. And I'm just so, so insanely grateful. I, yeah, I, I just wanted to, like, I usually post them on my Instagram when people, when, well, when anyone sends me a book. Um, but yeah, this, just, this is so overwhelming. So anyway, that's why this is happening. Again, don't expect more hauls from me. This is not every book that I've gotten recently or will get soon or, anything or yeah this is just books that were given to me recently that I want to say thank you for so that's what this is don't expect it again unless I guess my patrons shower me with books again in which case I will because that's the least I can do really um it's gonna fall over no no also I don't know if they I mean I tag them on my Instagram but it's like in an insta story which like goes away within 24 hours so I don't know if they want to remain anonymous so I'm not gonna say which patron got me which thing. I'm sorry if you did want me to say your name. I know who you are. Whenever you send me a gift note, I stick it in the book so that it's forever in the book and I'll always know who gave it to me. But I don't want to like say people's names if they don't want to have their names. Anyway, so um, yeah. Th thank you to the people who you know who you are. I know who you are. Um, the, the world shan't know who you are, I'm sorry. But anyway, okay, here are the books. Oh, please don't stop, 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 don't fall, don't fall. Um, first up is Fragile Things by Neil Gaiman. This is like one of the only Neil Gaiman books that I've never read before. If, I mean, if you don't count like children's stories or like all of the Sandman series, like all of his comic books, but like novels and like written adult works or even honestly children. This, basically, I feel pretty confident saying this is like the only Neil Gaiman book that I've never read before. It is on my list this year for my year of Gaiman. So anyway. Fragile Things. Next I have two Chiltern special editions. They're so stunning. First I have The Picture of Dorian Gray by, um, what's his name? Oscar Wilde. <laughs> what was his name? These editions are just so insanely stunning. They're gilded pages. Just, just gorgeous, gorgeous books. Um, I love Picture of Dorian Gray, so I'm very excited to own this. And the other Chiltern that was gifted to me, Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte, which again is just stunning which is a, a classic that I very much like and a lot of people that like it are wrong <laughs> because this book is not a romance book and if you think that it is you're wrong <laughs> but anyway I do love Wuthering Heights and I'm very excited to own this then um by T. Kingfisher I have A House with Good Bones which is a stunning cover I've all no that's not true I was gonna say I've only read What Moves the Dead but I did also then read Wizard's Guide to Defensive Banking, which I didn't really like that much. So I guess that's why my brain deleted it. But What Moves the Dead, I loved so much. And I think this is a little more in the vein of that. Well, Wizard's Guide, I think was, was middle grade or, or YA. This, I hope is gonna be, um, it's like haunting Southern Gothic, you know. I feel like this would be in keeping with What Moves the Dead in terms of like style and tone. But I don't really know too much about it other than the fact that it's by T. King Fisher and it looks like it would have some like horror or dark elements to it. And I really, really love the cover, much like I loved What Moves the Dead. I am disappointed. What Moves the Dead, the naked book, had like um, beautiful art on it as well. This book does not. I mean, I've been led to expect this now, so I feel let down, but I do still really like the cover design. So hopefully I like this. Next I have uh, An Emotion of Great Delight by Tehera Mafi. Little known, less known, um, a thing about me is that I really like the Shatter Me books by Tehera Mafi, which I know are like pretty universally like not panned exactly, but like they are pretty derided with good reason. I don't disagree <laughs> necessarily. I do a little bit take issue with the criticism that, um, or how much criticism she gets, because I do think that her, like the prose in Tehera Mafi's books is, um, demonstrates a great deal of talent. And that is the thing that I really like about her books. And people make fun of how flowery and like bursting with metaphor similes artistic flourishes it is. And it is. And that may not be your cup of tea, sure. But 
it does take talent to write what she writes. Like there is genuine poetry in what she writes, even if you think the story is dumb or even if you don't like flowery language. So I do think she gets like an unfair shake. Like what she's doing requires a great deal more talent than what other people, other authors that she gets lumped in with are offering. Anyway, so yeah, this is not part of Shatter Me, but it is by Tehada Mafi, which is why I'm interested in it. I, I don't expect it to be anything like Shatter Me because um, it's um, like contem I believe it's contemporary fiction. Yeah, I think it's it's somewhat inspired by um, Tehada Mafi's own experience, but yeah, it's about um, a Middle Eastern girl in America on the heels of 9-11, navigating being a Middle Eastern person in the States at that time. It's a searing look into the world of a single Muslim family in the wake of 9-11. It's about a child of immigrants forging a blurry identity, falling in love and finding hope in the midst of a modern war. So yeah, I'm quite hopeful that this will be quite good. Next up, I have some Dune books um, because I am interested to read not all of Dune, but the rest of the sort of like beginning trilogy, if you will, that people kind of say that like that is a complete story arc that you can stop there, which is what I fully intend to do. But I have Dune Messiah and Children of Dune in these gorgeous special editions. I have already Dune, the first book in this edition. So this will complete the set. And yeah, I am intrigued to, to read these. And I might try to squeeze them in, or at least one of them in, before the next Dune movie comes out because I have good reason to think that the next Dune movie might be drawing on the next book. So TBD on that. But yeah, these are just stunning books. I kind of also don't want to read them in case I hate them. <laughs> but oh my god, they're just like absolutely stunning. The dust jackets have art on them. Embossed, I don't know if you can comes up on camera. Oh, I think it it kind of does. But embossed is, I will face my fear. Oh, okay, let's put one down before we look at the other one. This is the dust jacket on Dune Messiah. Stunning, stunning. I will face my fear, embossed on the cover. And then the end papers, pages have the stunning art. Gorgeous, gorgeous books. And then Children of Dune, which is very pink. <laughs> embossed on it is Only I Will Remain. I don't know if you can see that. And then Dust Jacket is a tropical paradise lol. And the end page is oh, stunning, stunning. Ta-da, ta-da. That's the Dune books. Uh, then next I have, I haven't taken the plastic off, but the third volume in the Sons of Ares graphic novel prequels. Um, I have the first two. I haven't read the second one because when it came out, um, he said that it would have Dark Age spoilers and I had not yet read Dark Age when it came out. I have read Dark Age now twice, so I really could read it. I just haven't gotten around to it. And I believe that this volume, third volume, is the last volume. I, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it is. Now that this is complete, maybe it's time to finish the Sons of Aries prequel graphic novels. The first one, the first volume made me cry. I don't really like, I don't really read graphic novels. Um, so I wasn't like too thrilled about it. It was more just like, well, it's Red Rising, so I want it. Um, and yeah, I, I really, really like the first one, so. Uh, I need to read the second one and uh, and now I have the third one. So yay for that. I'll probably take the plastic off. I don't know why I haven't. Where did those scissors go? Here we go. Still just a shiny. <laughs> yeah. The naked covers on all of them have the iconic Red Rising cover. Very excited to have this. And the art style for all of these is, I think, very impactful. I like it a lot. I do warn anyone who's thinking of picking them up, I can confirm that the first one has definite spoilers for Red Rising. And then the second one, I'm told by Pierce Brown, has spoilers for Dark Age. So presumably the third one is spoilery for everything. Um, I mean, I would be very shocked if it was spoilery for Lightbringer, which isn't out yet, but maybe, who knows? Uh, next up is a book that um, I probably wouldn't have been interested in, except that one of my patrons is like obsessed with it. And that is not the patron that sent it to me, um, amazingly. I think she wouldn't send it to me because she's afraid that I will dislike it. And you know, it's awful to have me read a book that you just like. But anyway, it's Illborn by Daniel T. Jackson. Like when she was reading this, like nonstop, just like Illborn obsession. Like the way I am about The Cuckoo by Leo Carew is how she was about Illborn. And I was like, I mean, I gotta know. So anyway, like I said, she's not the one that sent this to me. She's quite anxious about the fact that I have it. But I am quite excited to see what all the fuss is about. Also, Broken Binding, just as like to filming this video, like today, announced a beautiful special edition of it. So I really hope I like this and I should probably hurry up and read it because that special edition looks gorgeous and I surely would want that if 
I, this is a book that I like, so might give this a peek before that goes up for sale. Then Emily Henry, who I keep trying even though she keeps letting me down, um, Happy Place by Emily Henry. Um, my first and favorite book of hers was Beach Read. Uh, I loved Beach Read and I was like, this is my new favorite author and I went and bought like her backlist and I haven't liked a single book of hers that I've read since. In fairness, they were all pretty much like, I think she only wrote YA before she started writing adult with Beach Read. I could be right. No, I did read um, the book that she wrote after Beach Read um, that was adult um, and it was something about vacation. People will meet on vacation? I think that's what it's called. But it wasn't bad. I liked it better than the other books of hers that I've read other than Beach Read. But I was, I was pretty unimpressed with it. I own Book Lovers. Everyone says it's great. I'm excited to read it, but I haven't read it yet, so I don't know. And then Happy Place is her... If it's not her newest, then it's like her second to newest. The cover is deeply pink and like the naked cover. Yeah, it just doesn't let up. Like it's, it's very pink. The pink does not stop. Thank God the pages are not pink. I had a book, this is like not related to this at all, but I did have a book that I read years ago that it took me a minute to realize it because I was like, there's something weird about the ink that is like, that the text is printed with. And I don't normally go outside to read just because I, because I don't. Mostly I feel like it's really annoying and inconvenient and too sunny and I'm a vampire. Um, but for some reason that book, I did take it outside to read and it wasn't because of the ink being weird. I just happened to take that book outside and when I took it outside and the sun hit the ink, I realized that what was weird about the ink was that the ink had glitter in it, had like sparkles in it, which I have never seen before or since. And it baffles me to this day why that was the case. Anyway, I'll have to say thank god the ink is not pink <laughs> in this book. I truly would not be able to read it if it was. Um, and then this was actually sent to me by a friend, not a patron, but it's been recommended to me by quite a few people. And that is an encyclop- or just encyclopedia of fairies by Heather Fawcett. It's a stunning cover. I was making the rounds of booktubes. I think it was in one of the boxes, like Fairy Leader or Lumicrate or something. Um, Elle recommended it to me. Um, some other people recommended it to me. So I'm quite excited to read it. And the author has worked as a backstage assistant for a Shakespeare theater festival. Not that that indicates anything about like her taste in Shakespeare, but like Shakespeare. <laughs> so yeah, I'm intrigued. It's like, it's giving Lud in the Mist, Jonathan Strange, you know, like vibes, which I'm all about. So yeah, I'm, I'm certainly intrigued. Then my Witcher hardcover collection has been completed. Uh, but the, the, what numbers are they? I get so confused by the numbering. Well, whatever, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> the last three were gifted to me. And in fact, I did not have to buy a single Witcher hardcover because since they came out for various reasons and occasions, basically my patrons sent me like all of them. I'm trying to think if any of them were sent to me by someone that was not a patron. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. If you gave me a Witcher book and you're not a patron, then let me know. But I'm pretty sure that they were all given to me by patrons which is just amazing. Cause like I was gonna spend the money on them as like the read along got to each book. And I was like, uh, you know, I would shell out for it cause I did want them, but I won't have to, didn't have to because my patrons sent me all of them, not all at once, but like now I have all of them and I didn't have to buy a single one. So that's amazing. So my favorite cover by far, even though it's probably my least favorite book of them all, it's the worst book in the best covers and that ain't that just the way, is Tower of Swallows. This cover, I will not accept arguments. This is the best cover of all of them absolutely stunning also kind of reminds me of the black cauldron which i love yeah so it's gonna it makes me want to like reread this with a favorable eye so i can convince myself that this is my favorite book so that the, the cover of this one can be the cover of my favorite book that's not gonna happen but like oh it's so stunning i don't even care that i don't like this one that much and then of course lady of the lake this cover i like the least probably and not just because it's purple but also fuck purple but yeah i don't i don't know about this rocker version of Siri, which is what it's giving. But it's, I mean, it's it's a nice cover, but it's purple and it's weird. So I don't know. It's got nothing on Tower of Swallows, but I mean, obviously like for this collection, like it's, it's nice, it's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I wouldn't want to have this collection and not have this one. And then last but not least, Season of Storms, which is the only Witcher book that I have not read. So I have no idea how I feel about the contents, but it's a very cool cover. Again, I don't really like how, maybe that's also it. Cause like, I like, um, we're just gonna talk about cover designs now. If, if there's people on the cover, I like it to be like really stylized or really distant. So like, yes, there's a person right here, but like you can barely make them out. It's more just like a silhouette. Um, and it's like just more part of this like bigger picture. So I really don't like so much these two covers, this especially because it's really purple. Um, but this too, like I don't like how like much it, how prominently it features like people on them. 
in a not stylized way. So like that's, it's not, I, uh, it's not my preferred, but they are still really stunning. And this teal color is gorgeous. Just a couple more to go. Actually uh, a couple means two. I have three more to go. So a few. I have Raven Unveiled by Grace Draven. Um, this is the third book in her current, like uh, I think it's her first traditionally published series. I read the first one, Phoenix Unbound. And I, I love Grace Draven's writing, so I enjoyed her writing, but I really didn't like the story and I didn't like the, 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 like, the couple that it was about. I had a big issues with like how the romance was written, which surprised me because like not every book Grace Draven writes is my favorite, but I usually really like what she does just sort of generally. Um, nothing will ever be Radiance. Radiance is, I don't know why anyone reads any book other than Radiance, it's amazing. <laughs> but anyway, um, but you know, each book in the series is about a different couple in the same sort of like universe. So I haven't read the second one yet. I do have it. Um, Dragon Unleashed, I think is what it's called. Um, and then this is the third one, Raven Unveiled. And yeah, I've been meaning to catch up because I like the first one, like kind of left a bitter taste in my mouth, but like I, I at no point like wasn't gonna not read the next books because it's Grace Raven. So even if the first one was like not my fave, it's I'm sure there's good stuff in here. So um, I'm pleased to have the third one. Then in preparation for Blades and Bodice Rippers, Mara's pick for our OG 23 dress up and read a classic book. <laughs> she chose The Cask by Freeman Willis Crofts and she showed off this amazing kind of like vintagey looking edition of it um, during our previous show when we talked about Splendid on Amanda's channel and dressed up as Regency ladies. So I was like, oh, like, well, if we're reading that, that's the edition that I need. So someone kindly gifted me this edition, which is very cool. I really hope I like it because I love, well, I mean, I generally hope I like books, but look at how cool this book is. It looks so vintagey. I love it. I mean, want to have like all mystery novels look like this now. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited to read this in general. I'm quite excited to dress up. I think I'm going to go, I haven't decided if I'm going to do like femme fatale or like detective hard-boiled private investigator or some kind of thing. I don't know. Haven't decided. We'll do half and half, like Two-Face. Who knows? But <laughs> I'm excited to own this cool copy. And then last, but certainly not least, is Lyra's Oxford by Philip Pullman, illustrated by Chris Wormel, which is a gorgeous illustrated book. Um, that's like, if you don't know, Lyra's Oxford, I mean, it's in the, it's the universe of his dark materials. Um, so I believe this is a short story or novelette that he wrote. And then it's been fully illustrated. For, oh, there goes the note. For example, oh, pantalimon. For example, ta-da. So yeah, this is a stunning little book that I'm excited to leaf through and to own. And those are all the books that were recently sent to me that I am so very grateful to have. Thank you so, so much to everyone that got me these books. Again, if you wanted me to say your name on camera, I'm sorry, but I didn't know if people wanted that or not. So I went with not. Um, you can let me know for next time or you can <laughs> comment down below and say it was me I gave her that book <laughs> um and then I'll heart it and confirm uh so no lying but yeah thank you thank you thank you for all these amazing books um and yeah uh no no more book hauls um <laughs> so <laughs> sorry I don't like doing book hauls but yeah when people give me a bunch of stuff I want to properly thank you so thank you and let me know in the comments down below if you oh, see this is why I don't like doing book hauls because like what the what, what do you say about books that you like don't haven't read presumably that's why they're hauled you don't plan to read them right now so you can't even say that you can't even say you will say what they're going to be about or how you feel about them because they're just going to be going on yourselves and then at the end she's like let me know in the comments down below what that you would like to have these books as well <laughs> like I mean sure you can let me know that if you'd like but yeah I, I don't know <laughs> let me know whatever you want to let me know <laughs> I post videos on Saturdays other random times as well release Saturdays so like and subscribe to my Patreon if you feel so inclined and I'll see you when I see you bye